Good morning, everybody. Okay, so I know I hadn't been on in a week or two, and we finished up the lead job. We got it done, got everything moved back home, and Sarah Beth's been here, so I've been kind of just taking it easy, taking some time with her. We've been going swimming and playing in the yard and just enjoying ourselves, having a good old time. But anyway, uh, Red, our log truck, it needs some tender loving care, some brake work. So I'm gonna take you all along with me and let you see uh, how to do open center or spoke hub or some people call them Dayton style hub tires and rims. I want y'all to see uh, the process of getting them off, replacing the brakes and then putting the tires back on and all that good stuff, truing them up. And I'm probably gonna break this up into like a part two or even maybe three part series because it'll probably get mighty long. So, uh, anyway, I uh, hope y'all enjoy it. And maybe some of you that might need a little help with your Dayton's and maybe these style uh, brake drums and brakes, it might help you a little bit. Take care. All right, y'all. Uh, first things we need to do, this is an air brake equipped truck. So the first thing we're gonna need, need to do, well, actually the first thing we're gonna need to do is make sure the brakes are released because the brakes has gotta be released. Yes, the brakes are released. That's your first step. Second step is you're going to need a caging bolt, which looks like this. That caging bolt has got to go right in here like this. It's got to go in there and twist and turn and it'll lock. Then you wanna you wanna run that nut down and then I'll take a three quarter inch wrench. I'll turn that nut and cage that brake. Basically you turn it until it, you know, it gets tight. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna draw that diaphragm up and uh, keep it from uh, when the air bleeds off and it will, it's an older truck and the air will bleed off. When the air bleeds off, it'll keep it from uh, putting pressure back on our drum. And uh, let's see here. Maybe I can show you right through here. Right down there is our slack adjuster. And right there is a 9 16 bolt. I've got to turn that uh, counterclockwise, I believe. I think that's right, counterclockwise. Uh, with a 9 16 wrench. And that slack adjuster is going to back our, our brakes off. Because uh, this is the brake drum right here and our brake shoes is right up under here if y'all can see it right there all right y'all again you got to have this caging tool now a lot of times there'll be a slot right here on the brake chamber this it's on the other side it's actually up here there'll be like a little hole in fact if you'll right there on that one sit right there there's your caging bolt for that side and it's froze in there like always i mean this is an older truck stuff is rusty you know but you need this caging bolt the brakes are released that's important that you got the brakes released first and then stick your caging bolt in there it's, it's got these little slots you stick it in there and then you turn it about a half a turn or so pull out on it and it won't come out then run your nut down You'll need a three quarter inch wrench and this is pretty standard on most air brakes. And it won't go very far because you've already got the brakes released. Basically what this does is it captures this, uh, this brake chamber and it keeps it from applying the parking brake if we lose air pressure, which we're gonna lose air pressure cause we got a couple air leaks. It'll leak down over time. So this caging bolt's gonna hold it and it's gonna keep it from releasing if that makes any sense. Okay, now that we got the brake chamber caged, remember three quarter inch wrench, now you're gonna need a 9 16 And right up here, we're going to, let's see if I can show you right there. That's your uh, slack adjuster adjustment bolt. It's 9 16 And what that's gonna do is that's gonna back our brakes all the way off. So that way we can get them out. So that'll be the next order of business. 
Now, if you'll look right here where this shaft is, you'll see it turning. That's about it. These brakes about wore out. And it's been needing some attention for a while now. Okay, so we've got that. Hopefully that'll be enough for to make it easy on us to get these things out. Uh, so that's that part of it. Now let's proceed out to the axle. All right, y'all, the next order of business, gotta get this axle out because there's a nut in there that's gotta come off in order for this hub to come off. Now I went ahead and backed these off, these nuts. I'm not gonna take them all the way off until I get this axle broke loose. There'll be, uh, see right there, like silicone. When you put these axles back in, you wanna put a bead of silicone around it. That's to keep axle oil from, you know, gear oil from leaking out and water getting in it. Uh, so, to do this, beat a little bit. It'll get loose, and then when it does, when you can get enough uh, crack in it, you can take a flathead, a screwdriver, or putty knife, whatever you want to use. You just don't want to get into the metal on the hub. That's why I use a hammer like that. Then you can take your screwdriver, a little bit here, and then do it a little bit over here. Y'all can see that oil drain out down there. And you just keep kind of working it around until it comes out. But I left them nuts on there in case you know it come too far out, it wouldn't it wouldn't come all the way off. So Alright, she's coming off. And this can be so aggravating uh getting all this off you know because all this stuff is rusty and all that kind of stuff it takes you, you got, kind of got to be patient on this part of it uh just a little bit at a time working around until it comes off <clears throat> i'm gonna go ahead and take my nuts off now Anytime I'm ever in doubt about something like this, I just leave the nuts on in case it comes flying out. It shouldn't do that, but you don't never know how things are going to go, so it don't hurt to leave them on there just for a little extra, a little extra safety. And sometimes y'all they'll just you know, once you get them cracked loose from the uh from the hub there they'll just slide right out real easy and i'm gonna take a i'm gonna take a die set and i'm gonna run a die over all these studs and clean them up real good and that'll make it a lot easier probably go ahead and get new nuts to go on it too that'll just It'll make things a lot easier next time I have to do it. And there's gonna fight to the end. Threads must be a little bigger. And there's dirt and mud and everything else. So, you know, like I say, you just kinda gotta be patient with it. It's an old truck. Maintenance hadn't been kept up on it like it need to be. But we're taking care of it a little bit at a time. We're trying to get things in tip-top shape on it. These old trucks a lot of times get abused and people tend to forget about doing the maintenance on them. But this is the only way we've got to get in our logs to the mill. So we try to do our best to take care of the old girl if we can. And if you own a truck, or any piece of machinery if you own it you're going to work on it ain't no doubt about that i'm gonna try this crowbar
All right, there she goes. All right, so we got that done. Let's make sure we put that bushing back in there. All right, now she's she's free. So I'm gonna go and slide the axle out. Let me put that bushing up here. I'll be lost it. Put it with the nuts. And there it is. Ain't much to it. Okay, now come right here, Scott, where you can show them. It's got two big nuts, and there'll be a tab washer behind this first nut. And y'all can see it right here, the tab bent over that flat. That tab is to keep that nut from backing out. And there's a slot right there that that washer has got a inside tab on it that goes in that slot and it keeps that washer from backing off and if it's been maintained properly all you got to have is a pin punch and a hammer you want to bend that tab down first and then you can take your pin punch and tap that nut and that nut will come right off it don't need to be super tight so <clears throat> Let's see if we can get in here and get this thing off. Maybe y'all can see it. Me and Skylar's doing our best to show y'all. Let me, uh, where's my screwdriver at, Skylar? Here, I'll hold the camera, grab my screwdriver right quick. Hopefully y'all can see that. Look, daylight on the other side. Because I got the other axle out so you can see all the way through. All right. And you may have to take a screwdriver sometimes like this right here and kind of get it started. All right, now that I got it started, I'm gonna use a pin punch cause it's a little, a little more flat. Can y'all see that right there? See that tab? That's what you want to bend down. Now y'all, I don't keep a daggum socket this big. I mean, this is like almost a four inch socket. And I don't know what too many other people do either. You can see right here, look at this nut. See how it's got them marks on it? People has done the same thing I'm about to do in years past when they had to pull this hub off. So we'll see how smooth it goes. Now, you ought not to take very much just a little bit or to get it going the only thing is you gotta you gotta get at it at an angle where you can see how it's moving looks like there's a tab right up here that's that somebody has has tried to bend down so we'll get it past that and then I'll see can I do something with that tab. And like I say, again, you just kind of got to have a little patience here. This is it's a little bit aggravating. Now see, see right there how that tab that tab shouldn't be like that. One tab is all you need to hold it, but that tab's jacked up. So we'll have to fix it when we get it off and see how the nut's just spinning off now. That's all it needs to be. All you want to do is take up the slack and the bearings. You don't want to just torque it down real hard. If you tighten it down real hard, you're going to wear your bearings out prematurely. All right, so there's one nut. One nut down. 
And then next is going to be this this washer deal. Let's see here. Let's see if I can't tap it and get it loose. There she comes. Now see that right there, we're gonna fix that. We're just gonna, you don't need but one tab. So we're gonna cut that one and that one off and we'll bend that one back straight cause you don't need but one, y'all. One is plenty. All you're wanting to do is keep that outside nut from turning. That's what this lock washer does. It's kind of like a jam nut that keeps everything together. And then you got one more nut right here. Same deal with it. Just put your punch in there like that. And see see how easy it was to move and you know people that's maintained these old dating hubs they they know how how to do it some people i think try to tighten them too much and that's when you'll have a well you about got to go get a socket when that happens about the only way you'll get it off All right, and there's your outside bearing right there. Your axle's out, your nuts are off. There's your bearing right there, your outside bearing. The brakes are released and backed off. So in theory, in theory, this old girl ought to just slip right off of there. What do y'all think's gonna happen? I'm gonna bet on it not slipping right off of there, put it that way. Now you got to be careful y'all when this thing does come off it'll hit the top of your shaft right here the top of your uh axle shaft and it'll, it'll ding up in threads right there on you where your axle nuts go so you got to be careful about that so uh let's get to pulling all right y'all so our tractor wasn't doing nothing but pulling it off the blocks so we went and got the hydraulic jack got us a block and put in there on the axle I don't know if y'all can see it. Anyway, it's in there on the axle, and this jack will, will ease it off without so much rocking on the truck. We didn't want to pull the truck off the blocks. So, y'all bear with us, and we'll try it this way. Let's go slow and easy. Hold the jack this way toward me just a minute. It's definitely easier to pump. Tell them. Tell them. The pump we'll side of the jack. The, camera the pump side of the jack needs to be on the bottom because the bottle jack won't work on the side unless the pump's on the bottom because the pump won't get the fluid. He's right, y'all. Gotta have that pump down there on the bottom where it ain't gonna work. See how it's a popping? Them brakes has got it held up. Them brakes is eat up bad. And that's one reason why it won't come off. The S cams are done cammed over. But we're gonna get it. All right, hold it right there and then hold the jack and let me bump it. Now what I'm doing is having him hold the jack, putting a little pressure on it, and then we take your sledgehammer and kind of tip it. All 
like I said, y'all, gotta have patience. This is aggravating, but you just kind of gotta have patience when you're doing it. Get that again. Mm -hmm. Keep coming. Well, I can hear it coming. It's looking over there. Now I'm having to hold the jack straight for him. You know, you got to have a, a hand doing this. Sometimes it can be aggravating by yourself. All right, hold it right there. Let me, let me hit it again. I have something to do. Hmm. I have something to do. Alright, hold it right there. No, it ain't off the pad yet. We got a way to go. We're getting there, y'all. A little bit at the time. We're probably going to have to reset our jack. Reset the stroke on it so we have more stroke. Y'all just bear with us. This wouldn't be near as bad to do if these brakes weren't as bad as they are. We should have done already done this. In fact, we should have done this when we bought the truck. Would have made more sense. <clears throat> but we're gonna get it now. All right, stop. Can you hold it? No, stop. Take it loose. Move it easy. Move your right finger. That middle finger. All right, just a little bit. Let me get the jack out. Oh, okay. All right. Easy with it. Just go easy. Alright, hold up. Come right there and put you some pressure on that and hold it while I tap on it with the hammer.
ain't feeling that, Scotty. Just hold that straight. All right, y'all. Uh, y'all can see that we did get the hub off. And we didn't get to capture every single little old minute of it for you because it's just aggravating and slow and our camera was about to die. <clears throat> and as y'all can see, it pulled the it pulled the bottom shoe off the S cam, getting it off. But basically we just put a piece of flat metal plate across the end of the shaft. Uh we wrapped the chain around the hub on the outside, doubled it over like that, put the jack in it, jacked it off. Uh, we had to bump it with a hammer as it was coming off. It's aggravating. Just a pain in the butt. All right, y'all. So the next order of business is going to be getting the pads off, the uh, shoes. Uh, Skylar's going to remove that spring, and there's one on the other side also. He's going to go ahead and get them out right quick. All right, there's one. And there's one on the back side. He's going to get it off right quick. And we do got, like I say, the brakes are released. You can see that S-cam is sitting, you know, pretty near level. So it ain't got much pressure on them. And now he can take the hammer and uh, tap them off in pins off the back. And, and then they ought to come off the front. There's another spring right here in the middle that holds the shoes together up in the front, but it's best to just leave that spring on there and then they'll come off together. You gotta tap them kind of up, Skylar, up that way. It might come on off now. There you go. All right, now you can just see how they're in rough shape. And again, y'all, we should have done this a long time ago, and it's just my fault. I should have should have went ahead and done all this. Our wheel seal was leaking a little bit, and I've I've got a stick and brake somewhere, and we think it's probably going to be this one. But we're going to go in here and clean all this up. You know, clean the S cam up. You got grease fittings here and grease fitting on the slack adjuster. Everything needs to be greased up real good and freed up where to work good. And uh, and then we'll get ready to go back together with it. But it's going to get a real good cleaning just with a wire wheel, grinder and a wire wheel. We're going to clean it up real good, get new brake shoes, and uh, then we'll be ready to go back together with it. And the next order of business we're going to show you all is getting this wheel seal out. And as y'all can see, our wheel seal has been leaking a little bit. But we got to get the wheel seal out and get the bearing out. So that'll be the next segment here. All right, y'all. Uh, we're getting the seal out now. Uh, first thing we've done is we took a screwdriver, uh, drove it down in here like this ever so often, you know, every couple inches all the way around. That kind of breaks the seal just a little bit, loosens it up. And you can take just a claw hammer. Now, if you got a bearing puller, a bearing puller is probably a proper tool for this. But if you like me, you ain't never got the right stuff at the right time. You just take your claw hammer, put it in here a little bit at a time, all the way around. And again, this is another one of them deals that's sort of aggravating, but you just kind of got to go. A little bit at a time till you get it. There you go. There's wheel seal. See it's it's just war. <laughs> It's got some wear on it, it needs changing. So, that'll go in our pile with the brakes. There's our inside bearing. It don't look too horrible bad. We'll probably, we'll probably reuse it. All right, y'all, uh, we're still here with Red. 
we've already got the back off. I think we've already showed y'all all that. And we're gonna have a drum on this side. We gotta replace, probably just go ahead and replace both drums. And now we've got the front wheels off. And we're gonna go ahead and pull these hubs. Uh, we've already done the other side and got it off. And we're gonna show you this part. And uh, right here is your slack adjuster. You wanna make sure that the wheels, uh, the brakes are off in the inside and you got enough air pressure to relieve your brakes. And these slack adjusters on the front are a little different because you can turn them one way all the way and it'll cam over. You can turn it the other way all the way and it'll cam over. So it'll tighten your brakes basically from center either direction. If you start out in the center and go clockwise, it'll adjust the S cam and make your brakes get bigger. Or you can go the other way, you know, from center and it'll adjust the S cam and make your brakes get bigger. Skylar, let me, where's that, uh, let's see, here's our 9 16 wrench. I'm gonna show y'all what I'm talking about over here on this one. It'll be easier for you to see. Okay, so I'm on the, the slack adjuster here on the right side. Now I'm turning it clockwise. See how it's getting, it's, it's camming up. Okay, now if you go back the other way, it'll do the same thing to a certain point. You'll get, uh, you know, of course it's flat on one side and rounded on the other. Uh, but you'll get to a point to where it'll start spreading them going this way too. See what I'm saying? It stopped right there. So, to get everything as loose as you can get it, just, you'll adjust it one way and you'll see what I'm talking about. Uh, when you do yours, you'll turn it one direction and it'll get hard and then you'll turn it the other direction and it'll get hard and that's when it's pushing out on your brakes so turn it back to the middle and you'll get the most freedom all right Skylar's gonna pull the hub cap off uh he's got to get in there these front hubs are not all bathed they're uh, got grease in them so he's got to get them off put your knee up there on that spoke Skylar, and it'll hold it there you go. Uh, these are greased bearings on the front. So he's got to get that cap off. Then there's going to be a cotter pin and a nut and a washer. Uh, he'll pull that cotter pin, nut, and washer off. And then the bearing can come out. And then we'll do like we've done the other side and just take the hammer and tap it off. And we've got our brakes backed off as far as we can back them off. These brakes on the front at least on the other side, appeared to be a little bit better shape than the rears.
You may have to bend it a little bit more. Mm -hmm. You gonna twist it like that? Okay. Grab that little flathead and you stick it in that head and you work it out. There you go. Now stick it on there, keep it straight like mm -hmm. that, and uh, stick it on there, use the head of it like that, and prize it like that right there. Yeah. All right. There you go. Okay, he's got the pin out, so now he's just got to get the nut out. Of course, it's got all that old nasty funky grease on it. And these axle nuts, y'all, they shouldn't be real tight. You just want to take up the slack in the bearings is all you want to do. You don't want to have these axle, axle nuts real tight because they'll prematurely wear your bearings out. This is the nasty part of the of the operation. Like I told y'all though, there's a lot more to horse and mule logging than just horses and mules. There's stuff you got to do stuff like this too. Trucks has got to be maintained. I mean, you got to cut the logs and get them to the mill. You want a good, dependable way of getting them there and a safe way of getting them there. Let's see if you can get that washer and washer out now take him two screwdrivers and he can probably work it out just take a little patience but you can get it there you go just eat it out now again y'all they probably make a, a special tool for this it would make this job 10 times easier but we ain't never got the right tools to work with okay so he's got the nut and the washers off and there's the bearing the outer bearing so in theory short of just slip right off it's a good theory anyway she, she spins good so ain't no brakes are dragging so that's a good sign now we just I want to see if it'll just pull off see if it'll pull off Maybe we might get lucky. It did move. Mm -hmm. Sticking a little bit, ain't it? Yep. I just kind of bump it around, you know, work it around. Don't hit it all on one side. There you go. I'll get y'all around here where y'all can see what he's doing. It's coming off. These these are a lot easier than the rears. A lot easier. Them rears were stuck pretty bad. Of course, the brakes on the back a lot worse too. All right, be careful that thing. Don't let it hit your foot now. There you go. That thing's gonna be heavy. Yeah, y'all, these old spoke hubs and drums are heavy now, I'm just telling you. See, look there, that one's cracked. It's got a crack right in the top of it. So, we're doing a good thing by, by changing them. Now, see what I was talking about, how the S cam is neutral right there? Uh, let me get my scuttler video me right here doing this let me show them about this s cam deal now y'all when you move the slack adjuster i just wanted to show you what i was talking about give you a better idea now see how it's it's about in the middle right there but see it'll keep moving if you keep turning it it'll keep on moving now see how it's a spreading the see how it's a spreading the uh 
the drums out or the shoes out. Now see that's uh that's clockwise if you're looking at it. Now I'm gonna turn it the other way. Alright, she's back neutral. Now, I ain't saying it's right the proper way, but it will spread them. See? A little bit. So if you were to go all the way that way, it would put a little pressure on it. That's what I'm getting at. Now, of course, naturally, the proper way to adjust your brakes is in the uh, clockwise position. You know? Uh, let me get my ratchet wrench to cooperate with me. Come on here, y'all. All right, see how it's... Now, now, this would be the proper way to adjust them because you got that radius right there. Instead of backing up on that flat, you're going to come up on that radius. And that's the way it's supposed to be anyway. But what I wanted to show you was you can't go till it stops one way or the other because you're going to be pushing brake shoes out. See what I mean? All right, now we're going to go back the other way until it's neutral again. And that's going to take all the pressure off of it. So right there is neutral. That'll be the easiest way to get the brakes to come apart right there. Now, the next order of business is going to be to take these off, this and this, and basically you just push it in. And that little tab, it's got, uh, you got to push it in and turn it. I think it's a quarter of a turn and it'll come right off in theory. And then there's two nuts right here and here on the back side. Them nuts has got to come off. Once you get them nuts off, she'll pop right off. The brake shoes look pretty good other than this one being cracked, which is a no-no. They shut you down for that. DOT will. I'm glad they didn't look at our brakes because we'd have got put out of service. But we're fixing it. We're going to have some new brakes here before long. All right, y'all. I want to show you how we've been getting these springs off, and they're kind of aggravating. To be pretty near honest with you, like I say, you just you kind of push them in, you got to compress them a little bit, and then this little deal here just got to be turned. Uh oh, and again, my ways ain't the best ways, I'm just this is just some <laughs> redneck ingenuity. Of getting it to work all right so there's that one see how it's got that little old, it's got an impression right there that it sits in and then it's got a, a hole and then this little thing here how it's flat that's the deal so you got to take them off and uh you can grab a hold of it right here kind of turn it come right off Sometimes they do, and then sometimes they don't. <laughs> okay, Skylar, take them around there and show them them nuts. Them nuts has got to come off, and these are the heads right here. This is, instead of having pins like the back does, this one's got through bolts, and these has got to come out, and they kind of a pain. Uh, they ain't had no anesthesia put on them, so we'll set up and let y'all see that. All right, now, uh, now y'all, we're going to take these off. Uh, we're going to try to stay out of y'all's way where you can see. But we got to get in there to it, too. So hopefully y'all can see what we're doing. <clears throat> and if it's like the other side, I'll have to, I'll have to use cheater pipe a little bit to get them broke loose. But then... After we get them broke loose, then I can do a little more with them. Well, it would help if I go the right way, wouldn't it? Let's see here. Can't believe y'all sit over there and let me go the wrong direction. 
Man, that ain't no good. So let's try it like that. All right, here we go. Lord, things are stuck. There it goes. Wouldn't hold my mouth right. There we go. You turned the whole wheel. Huh? You turned the whole system. Yeah, that's broke loose. That's all it that matters. Yeah. All right. So, there. We in good shape on that one, I think. Now, y'all, I don't. I don't take the nut all the way off. I get it backed off till it's out toward the end. Cause we're gonna have to bump it with a hammer to get it to come out. Uh, and you don't wanna hit the threads with a hammer. So what I do is I get the nut right out toward the end and then I hit the nut. Okay, maybe just a little more. probably good and I'm gonna take my hammer and bump it all right she's broke loose now now we'll go we'll move on to the next one maybe this time I'll start it in the right direction See, gotta have a little bit more, a little more stroke on it. And right there might get it. How's that? I done something. I don't know if I broke it loose or just turned it. It broke loose. That ain't bad. Sometimes it works out that way. That's how they ought to be. And when we go back together with all this, we're gonna put anesthes on everything. That way if we have to do it again, it won't be no big deal. Everything I work on, I put anesthes on. I believe in that stuff. Okay, she's just about out, so now I'm gonna take the hammer. Now they drove out, they got started out, so you just don't want to mess up your threads is all. That's the only reason I don't I don't hit on the bolt. And like I said now y'all, I don't profess to be no professional heavy wheel diesel mechanic or nothing like that. I, I've been around this stuff all my life and I worked on heavy equipment and, been around logging and heavy equipment all my life and I've done this kind of stuff a lot but I ain't saying it's the best way I'm just saying it's the way we're doing it you know <laughs> sometimes you just have to do what works and sometimes you got to get creative especially on this old stuff that's rusted up hmm it can be a bear sometimes all right I got the nuts off so now now I'm going to use the ball pin. I'm going to use the ball part, the ball part of my hammer, just just to tap on the thread on the end of the bolt. There's one washer. There's two washers. I'll go ahead and put them up here so that way I don't have to pick them up out of the dirt. All right, Skeller, it ought to come on off now. Watch out for throwing objects. 
All right, she ought to come on off now. We just got a lot of cleaning to do. Awful lot of cleaning. All right, that roller come out. Mm -hmm. That other one. Oh, will it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's get them. Okay, dokie. Now see how that's stuck in there? Because it's got that. There's a bushing in there that's taking up slack and it's stuck in there. And you sometimes you can just you can do that and it'll work. And sometimes it won't. And if you got a hit on it pretty hard, I don't suggest you hitting them threads. Put you a nut on the end of it. See like that? That's too much. So what we'll do, take you a nut, start you a nut back on there. See how I got that nut on there? And then you can hit it a little harder and you ain't gonna mess up no threads. And that's the idea behind it. It's just not messing up your threads. All right, y'all, I wanna show y'all this right quick before we get too far gone. This is the back of the hub. And here's your wheel seal. And there's your inner bearing. So we wanna get that, we wanna get that wheel seal out which it don't look awful, too awful bad. Let's see. And as I've told y'all before, I am satisfied that there is probably a tool made just for this but we don't have one so we're going to use a claw hammer because we're going to replace this seal anyway all right there it is so there's the inner bearing and it's bigger and then there's your wheel seal Here's your outer bearing, see the difference? And we'll go through and clean these up real good and regraze them before we put them back in. It'll be good as new. Okay, y'all, so there it is. There's the front. She's bare. She just needs to be cleaned up. That S cam needs to be cleaned up and everything greased. See, there's a there's a grease fitting right here. It ain't never been used, ever. <laughs> or at least in a long time. So we're gonna grease everything, clean it up real good, and get us some new brake pads and that'll, or brake shoes. And that'll be first part of next week. This is Saturday. We ain't gonna be able to get no brake parts till Monday. So I just wanted to bring y'all along for the disassembly. I'll probably do all the cleaning on my own. <laughs> I won't show y'all all that because I don't want to take up so much time. But we've got everything disassembled. Like I said, we're going to have to replace that drum. And while we're at it, probably just go ahead and replace both drums and be done with it. Then I'll know we won't have to fool with it no more for a long time. And while we're doing all this work on the back axle, we're going to go ahead and drain the differential oil. And top it off when we get everything put back together. And probably go ahead and go over the truck and grease it real good. While we got everything apart, be a good time to grease the front end real good and everything. And uh, check everything over, check all the springs. We know we got a, a weak spring on the left side over here. We know we've got a weak spring that we're gonna have to deal with. It's, it's not broke, but it is weak and it lets it sag a little on this side, so. If any of y'all know where I can get a, it's a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, I believe it's a 10 leaf. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, I think it's 10. 
I believe I counted 10. Uh, 11,000 pound capacity on the front, anyway, on the front axle. So I guess that would be like a 5,500 pound spring, maybe, something like that. I'm sure some of y'all probably know more about this than I do. But if y'all know where I can get a new spring for it, let me know in the comments below, would you? It'd be a good help to us. But hopefully before long, we'll have red back up and running and we'll be able to get back to cutting some timber and doing what we like. Thank y'all for watching. And there'll be some more videos coming out on putting it all back together and all that good stuff. So I'll show y'all. I kind of want to take y'all along start to finish and let y'all see what we got going on. And, and mainly, uh, I mainly wanted to bring y'all along so y'all could see <laughs> that there's more to it than just driving a pair of mules or a pair of horses. You know, we we do our own maintenance. I guess you probably could pay a shop to do it. And in some ways, it'll save you some time. You know, you can keep cutting timber and keep trucking. But without the truck, we're down anyway. So it really and truthfully for us, it makes more sense for us to just do our own maintenance if we can, uh, because we're gonna be down anyway and we can't move no logs until the truck's fixed. So it's a good idea to do your own maintenance, or at least for us, we do our own maintenance. We learn more about the truck. We know what's been done to the truck. And you know, we kind of got a little better idea of what's going on. We are gonna go to 11R225 tires, rims and tires. Uh, the back right now has got 10 200s and they're split rim tires. We wanna do away with them and go to 11R225. We're gonna be looking for a set of rims uh for that we may not do it right now but we are going to be looking for it in the near future so if any of y'all's got some lines on that you can drop us a comment in the sec comment section below and let me know thank y'all for watching and have a good day see you